Good morning. Well, it's good morning as we record this. By the time this goes out, it will probably be the afternoon. I know normally, guys, we do this live, but it's time constraints and whatever. So you're going to have to put up with a recording. It's the best we can get a recording or they get bugger all. No, well, it's either mean, that or they get, wo- <laughs> they get or they get woken up at some ungodly hour that we're recording this. But there you go. Duke. Hey, let's, let's how are you, nice. my friend? Let's be nice. Let's, let's um, I am, I'll be honest with you, mate. I, I'm buzzing. Great result. Um, I wouldn't have expected anything less, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah, I no, you, think you were quite confident. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I said, I, I said, uh, didn't I? I said 3-1 on the, um, on the pre-match. Um, I, and, and like I say, I mean, it, it was going to be a tough game going away from home to... Um, I, I thought it was going to be a significantly more hostile atmosphere. I mean, mm. I haven't seen any, um, I haven't seen any of the comments from people that were there last night saying that, um, you know, there was any kind of racist abuse or anything else. I've not seen any of that. None that I'm aware um, of. I've not actually seen anything on Twitter. So, I mean, I caught bits of the game, as you know. I mean, you were sat just behind me here uh, mm. watching the game with my family as well yes. as one of my other members of staff's family. Because uh, the table next to you was actually Dan Birch's uh, brother okay. and dad, so you, there was you know a, a row of West Ham behind me, which was quite nice. Um, obviously, we were short, so I was running around like a blue eye. So I didn't actually get to see as much of the game as I would have liked. No. Um, but from what I did see, let's be honest, we, you know we've come away with a <coughs> we've come away with important three points, two good goals, um, and when you consider um, consider how else uh, the British side stayed in Europe. Um, and, uh, without taking a, a slowly bowed dig at our North London compatriot. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, before we get into it too much more, do me usual. Oh. Drop a like on the stream, please. It really helps the channel out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And Duke, your bit. Um, this is what we got today. What we got today? Tickle the bell. Tickle the bell. Give it a little feather, a little feather, just just gentle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with the lineups then, shall we? I know what you're going to do. You're going to complain because I've just, you know, I've got this one rather than doing my usual one. You don't like this, I know, but I didn't have time. Okay, so the lineup. Now, it it surprised me when it came out. I've got to say, when I saw Lucas Fabianski in goal, because I was absolutely convinced that this was going to be Alphonse Areola's first team debut, but it looks like I was wrong. I, I wonder whether that means, reading between the lines, he's going to play against Manchester United. Um, but we'll talk about I that mean, later. He said he, he said he wasn't ready, didn't he? Who said that? Post-match Moyes, post-match Moyes said he wasn't ready. Okay, that's an interesting comment. Um, there was something that came up, um, as I say, um, stuff were closed down last night, and I was probably through my Twitter feed. Um, someone, had, someone had tweeted that you know, it's, it's in ways we trust, rather, rather, rather. But um, they couldn't understand why Ariola hadn't started in a mm. game that you know, we all, as, um, when I say we all, West Ham fans, uh, we all, um, ex- fully expected Ariola to be in there, and, and yeah. basically, uh, the, the reply to the tweet was that Moyes just said he didn't think he was ready. So, interesting. There you go. Interesting. Make of that as you see fit. Back four from left to right was Cresswell. Zuma making his first team debut. Issa Diop, his compatriot alongside him. And Ryan Fredericks at right back. No Vladimir Kufal, which, hmm, yeah, at, at first I thought, oh, oh, I think I'd have been sort of like okay with Kufal at right back and Fredericks in front of him like the Villa game. Um, Fredericks being popped in there. I was, and, and this is no slight on Ryan Fredericks, but he hasn't played at right fullback in a game of this magnitude for quite some while. So it was a little bit Two of a of concern to me. They haven't played um, in games that have, have got that connotation, um, really, for us anyway. <coughs> yeah. um, I mean, I know you had him in a, a, a left wing, mm. um, you know, when we did the, the preview. Um, but I, you know, a quick word on that back well, I don't think they got a foot wrong. No. So we sat deep and, and did a lot of inviting on, but I just, you know, as I said to you last night, we got the second and then all of a sudden we allowed, or 
yet we allowed them to play. Um, and, and we sat deeper and deeper. And I know, you know, you brought up the fact that, um, uh, you know, we, we didn't need to press, we didn't need to leave ourselves no. open. But the problem we were doing was they were still getting as many half decent opportunities, and there were a couple of decent ones in there, um, by us sitting deeper and deeper. So, I mean, it, it, it just didn't leave us. Didn't leave a nice taste in my mouth. I was getting a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit antsy due to some of the bits that were going on. But mm. again, I don't think that back four foot was put wrong now. No. Uh, Frederick, um, from what I understand, had a blinder. He played really <laughs> well, and there's a lot of people um, not necessarily clamouring for him to hit, be, uh, have a bigger role this season, but, you know, the cup games, etc., you know, that he can make that starting berth his own. In, in, in Europe and in the Cups. Um, and uh, the Zuma Diop partnership, you know, I've, I've read a lot about people thinking that that can be the more solid partnership um, from throughout our back, our, sorry, between our centre back because of the, uh, the, the language, um, yeah. you know, there. So, I mean, again, I, I don't think that back four put a foot wrong through the game. No, no. And just in front of them, shielding them. No, Declan Rice was not given the night off. Declan Rice, um, I think a lot of people thought would be maybe rested or maybe Thomas Socek was rest, would be rested. And Alex Crowell might come in. Possibly Mark Noble might come in. But no, they were both there. And uh, well, as you said earlier, Declan Rice, the performance he had. Thank goodness he was, to be perfectly honest. Um, just in front of them, you had a, a, an offensive midfield three from left to right. Pablo Fornells, Manuel Lanzini and Nikola Vlasic, who's obviously, as we said on the pre-match for this match, um, a product of the big rivals of Dinamo Zagreb, um, Harduk split and then up front in the number nine role because he's basically been given the night off, the day off on um, Sunday. Um, why not play him here? Mikhail Antonio is the number nine role. When you saw that, in the, the lineup in its entirety, were you happy? Were you concerned? What were your thoughts? I was, I was surprised. Um, I was I was very surprised. Um, I, I, I saw that. Um, I, I get the back four. Um, I, I was talking to a, a customer here yesterday, and I said about Ben Johnson coming on, if, and if we witnessed the kind of um, abuse that we were talking about, you know, the day before the game on the. Mm. On the you. Um, I was kind of hoping that Ben Johnson wouldn't get off the bench because I thought if we have that that kind of abuse that that could that could mentally really damage know, someone, couldn't it? Kid, I suppose. You know. Um, so I, you know, part of me was glad he didn't start. Um, and then I and then I look at those um, those midfield enforcers, um, and I just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, mate. If I'm honest with you. Um, I, I pretty much saw Bar, Bar Lanzini in there um, and Frederick um, what I could consider to be um, one of our in fact that up there is one of our strongest 11s not quite the strongest but from what I saw with Diop and Zuma there Bar, bar one player, two players there mate um, and Frederick and Lanzini mm. possibly our strongest starting 11 um, going forward, so I was a little bit surprised. I've got to say, um, you know, you can interchange Lasted from Bowen, um, you can interchange Lanzini and Ben Rama. Um, we, we've seen what happened there with Fredericks and and Sufal. Sufal. Um, I just think that, um, yeah, I, I saw it come out and I went. He's meaning business tonight. Mm. He is meaning business tonight. There was no dicking around. There was no, you know, no uh, crowd in there. There was no areola in there. He went with what he felt was um, right, and he got it spot on. Well, to be fair, we pretty much bossed that game from the opening whistle and just controlled it. You know, I, th I think... The first half we we pretty much dominated. And I'll I'll just I'll just real quick, just in case anyone is interested, um, you know, any Dinamo Zagreb fans that might actually be watching this. This was the Dinamo Zagreb lineup. Um, we spoke at length about Orsic being the danger man. 
Um, Petkovic was the number nine. We had um, Livakovic, who we was linked with as, as yeah. the goalkeeper. And, and like I say, a collection of names that, with all due respect, I am no expert on Dinamo Zagreb as a team. I'm no expert on Croatian And I won't be after football. that game either. No, no. But um, uh, the number 28, however, um, Theophile Catherine, if that's how it's pronounced, I do not know, but that's how it's spelled. So I'm sp I'm saying it as I see it. Theophile Catherine um, played a key role in the opening goal of the match, didn't he, Duke? What what did you did you see much of of the I, opening I goal? Saw, I know I he saw, was buzzing round. I, but... I saw both goals um, in in retrospect in in the replays after the goal, hmm. um, and um, I, I I do believe uh, a Theophile um, channeled his inner Jesse Lingard. Yes, uh, from the night previous, uh, or two nights previous, I say. Um, Antonio was on the ball. Antonio was switched on enough that you know he read that really well. Um, I, I, f I felt sorry for them at that point a little bit because that's not really how you want to give the way. The, the the goal, you know, I did feel sorry for them and I realised well West Ham said, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> it was, but it was, you know, Antonio on his toes um, and, you know, he, he was like lightning onto that ball and he got there probably, you know, a millisecond in front of that goalkeeper. He literally took it off of his yeah. toes. Literally off of his toes. Um, and a very nonchalant outside of the foot finish, I have to say, that when I watched it in the replay, and obviously it was going out a lot slower than it was in, in, in live time, um, it seemed to just trickle over the line. And I'm like, what was that? Like, come on now. Put it in the net, son. And he just kind of, nonchalant outside of the foot flick, back across goal. You know, I reckon if the uh, the defender on the far side um, had been switched on, he would have, he would have made Might it. Have got that. it. He could have cleared it off the line. So, um, but listen, it doesn't matter how they come. Um and I will take another three of those in these qualif in these mm. group games. To be honest, I certainly would, and even another two, I'd take another two in this. So, you know, it doesn't matter how they come as long as the ball ends up in the back of the net, and, and we find ourselves, you know, one new up relatively early on. Yeah, yeah, and um, and to be fair, if you look at those stats, and those were the stats at, at the half time interval, um, dominant from us. I mean, you look, you know, we had seven shots to their four. Two of our shots were on target to none of theirs. Obviously, we had a goal from one of those two shots. We had a 60-40 advantage in terms of possession. Our pass accuracy was 86%, which was 5% more than they were managing. And look at that on the corners. You know, we managed six corners to their zero, and we was caught offside once, and they wasn't at all. So that, you look at everything there, and that that just screams, along with a 1-0 advantage at halftime, that just screams of a dominant first 45, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, and we were, again, from the free kicks that I, I saw us concede in the first half, a lot of them were us bundling into play more than any kind of cynical foul. Um, I thought the ref was a bit soft in that first half. It was a couple of fouls that I saw that I believe should have been given for us. I think there was one that yeah. I remember distinctly. I think it was Mikhail Antonio. And he what the foul was not given. And then there was a, a foul that happened later on against one of their players. Far, far less, in my opinion. Referee gave gave the free kick no problem at all. And I'm like, well, why was why was that a free kick? And yet Mikhail Antonio... Oh, the phone a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, you know... It's, it's difficult because we know very little, or we know very little as, as us personally, um, about this Stargraph side. Um, so I can't, I, I can't make comments on how they've played previously or what, um, you know, what style of play they play. Do they, uh, they, you know, with us, we invite teams on. We don't care if they have, you know, seventy-five percent possession. We're going to break on you and we're going to get the goals because we do it quickly. Now, last night, it seemed like we had a lot of the ball and once again, um, struggled to make any clear-cut chances um, and, and make it count, you know, that dominant possession kind of thing. You know, you see City with dominant possession and they're going in three or four up at half-time, you know. So, um, we, we struggle with, with 
how to break teams down that will just do a West Ham, if you will, sit back, let you have the ball. Mm. We really did struggle to find those key passes. And, you know, Antonio spends um, a lot of his time out on the wing, which, you know, we saw in his heat map. Yeah, uh, he tends to sort of go uh, left against, mainly, doesn't he? Yeah, um, you know, is it against Leicester, I think, he looked at his heat map and he spent yeah. a lot of time out there. Um, so you don't necessarily have that um, out-and-out goal-scoring striker in the sense of um, a Michael Owen who will make those runs in behind. We don't have that person. So, you know, it's very difficult for us to to find that pinpoint ball. A lot of ours is uh, work it out wide and then bring the ball into the box and, and hope that we make um, some chances off of that. And listen, it works. It's our style. Um, and we made it work very well last season. Mm. Um, and we've made it work very well so far this season. Um, I just feel like we do need a, a, a second option. Um, yeah. That being said, a very dominant first half. We, we, we played some good football. Um, we got the goal, which I think we deserved more. Um, I think we should have gone on and actually really put them to bed. Um, I know a very nervy um, situation we find ourselves in away from home our first Europa, you know, Europa League uh, group game. Um, but overall, you know, a very good first half, mm. solid performance. A um, couple of standouts in there, you know, um, Declan Rice, again, um, just absolutely superb. You know, well, I've got, got some of his stats a little bit yeah. later on, um, which we'll get on to. That, yeah. yeah. But so we, obviously that was the first half. Like I say, dominant from the first whistle to, to the interval. One nil up. All the stats are, are pointing at us and saying, yeah, that's the team that's on top. Um, we then get to the second half and within a minute or so, there was a chance that was created by Dynamo, Mos- uh, Dynamo Moscow, showing my age, uh, mm. Dynamo Zagreb. <laughs> I can edit that bit out. Um, yeah, Dynamo I Zagreb did. created the chance. 47th minute, Petkovic, edge of the box. Um, low strike, bot towards the bottom left corner, but it was the wrong side of Fabianski's post. And you're thinking, oh, oh, they've they've had a little bit of a of a tactical talking to the guy that was the um, had the assist for the first goal for Antonio uh, Theophile Catherine. He he was hooked at half time. I, I dare say he probably wasn't very popular with the manager. Um, so off he came, and as I say, they created a chance. And I got to be honest. At that point, I was thinking, ah, ah, this this might yeah. this might be the old the the atypical game of two halves. So I was getting a little bit concerned. Um, about two three minutes after that, however, the game was pretty much over as a contest when Declan Rice intercepted the ball around halfway. He s- made one of his surging runs, which you know, and this is kind of the reason why you know he, he's capable of doing this. And I'm like, this guy is not just your bang average um, run-of-the-mill defensive midfielder. I remember, I mean, people called it for for quite a while, the position that um, Declan Rice occupies. People called it the Claude McAlealy position. I don't know if you you must remember that. And Claude McAlealy never really went past the halfway line. He was just, he was purely a shield for the back four. He'd break play up and then he'd just literally just give it to the guy. And he and he was a world class player. He was he was you know you don't play for the he team. Gave he it played to the for. guys that could play. Yeah, yeah. But he, yeah. At the job he did, he was brilliant. And and for years that was called the Claude McAlealy position. Well, Declan Rice can do that. Can do that. But he's also got the ability to make these bombing runs forwards. And you said it when we when the goal went in and you came over to me, didn't you? And and I'd already I'd already had the thought in my head that I'd seen this before, and yeah. you you said it. it you was, must have read oh, my mind, and you went, "It was the goal against Southampton last game of the season, last yeah, season, all over again." Um, I mean, just bombing forwards, left foot through the goalkeeper's legs, which always makes the goalkeeper look a little bit of a mug. But to be honest with you, I don't think you know the goalkeeper's not going to stand there with his, with his ankles sort of like glued together. You know, no, he's, he's, he's got to make a choice. Does he does he have his legs open ready to? to instinctively move right or left you yeah. know, and low, or does he run the risk of being, you know, nutmegged? And, you know, listen, I, I, the guy showed absolute boundless energy again last night. I'm not being funny. Um, 
he that was a long busting run. Mm. I know we're only you know a few minutes into the second half, but that was a long busting run, and he he gave that everything. And you could see by the time he put the ball through the keeper's legs, and the players were coming to celebrate him. You know, he was knackered. And he was blowing out of his ass a little bit there, but you know what? He's just gone for West Ham in Europe. Did he look miffed as to why he was still in our squad? Did no. he look miffed that he wasn't playing for one of the big boys the two nights before? No, he didn't. He looked happy. He looked content. He looked like he was where he wanted to be. Game and face. right now, I don't think he wants to... Not even just game face, mate. I don't think he wants to be anywhere else right now. I don't think he wants to play for any other club right now. You know, he's wearing that heart on his sleeve alongside that captain's armband. You know, he is, he's the club captain right now. I know Mark Noble is the, you know, is, is the club captain, but Declan yeah. Rice is that club captain right now. You know, and he's watched Mark Noble with club captain for some time now. So Declan Rice knows how to act. Declan Rice knows how to be that club captain. And, I mean, seriously, he looked like he wanted to be a West Ham player and mm. looked like he wants to be a West Ham player. So I have no, um, I have no qualms. You know, I, I have no concerns come January right now. Um, if we can get out of the Europa League group stages, um, he'll still be a West Ham player come the end of the season because I don't think he's going to want to leave. Even if a club comes in with a, a relatively decent um, amount, that you know, by that, I mean, 60, 70, 80 million quid, we're yeah. holding out for... 100. If he, if we don't get that 100, he ain't going to be pissed off that he's not left because I think he wants to drive this club on to, you know, that next level at the end of the season um, and then obviously maybe consider it. But, um, I'd, you know, I could sit here and speak all morning about, about Declan Rice. I, you know, fell in love with him a little bit more last night, Rob. Fell in love with him a little bit more last Steady. night. Steady. Steady. You're a happily married man, Duke. It's true. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, another thing that probably should be noted um, as well was the quick and decisive move. And it may not seem like a big deal, but it could have been potentially if things had gone wrong. Manuel Lanzini got booked in the first half. Now, whether you think he should have been or shouldn't have been, I mean, I watched it and it was like that was a yellow card. But he got a yellow yeah. card and, and around the time of the Declan Rice goal, I think it was just slightly before um, he went flying in on the challenge. And I've got to be honest, I looked at it and thought, no, that's a yellow card. That's yeah. a yellow card. Um, yeah, meant to me. But, you know, he didn't get the yellow card. And David Moyes, as soon as he had an opportunity to, to give Lanzini the shepherds, off he come. And it was, it was yeah. slight on his performance. Um, you know, it was just like, he was just like, look, you're on a yellow. You've just got away with one. You know, I, I need to protect you. I don't I want another situation five, where we've got we've got ten men for the last sort of like forty minutes or so um, away from home. You'll you'll g up the fans. You'll g up the players. You'll give them a, a, a sort of like a bone. And you know, who knows? It might might be that you go from three on, points to, to one, or maybe even yeah. losing all three. You know, because you've got well, ten men that, on the mate, pitch. But... He's running the risk of, of of counting himself out of games. He's more than likely going to start him and give um, and give Moyes a, another headache because mm. you know he gets himself sent off. He, he gets himself a, a, a one match or two match back. I'm not quite sure what it is in Europe for two yellows. Um, I think it's still one. Gives, but then that gives him that selection headache come the next game round, you know, because these are, in fairness, these are the games that Lanzini's going to be starting. These are the games that Lanzini's going to 110% be starting at the moment. You know, he may well start on Wednesday against United in the Cup, but right now, you know, he, you know, he, he looks a bit hot-headed. He looks a bit mm. like um, he kind of thrown himself in. And and you mentioned it to me. I, I thought the the replay of it, and it was like, yeah, yeah, hmm. get get a kid off the pitch because you don't want to run yeah. that risk. Yeah, it's causing a problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, Zagreb then had two opportunities. It was the same player, Ivanasek. Um, first one was um, a, a drive that took a deflection off of Diop. Fabianski yeah. was literally like glued to the spot and could only <laughs> watch it, and it just 
inches, literally inches wide of the left-hand post. And then about four minutes later, the same player um, hits a shot, bottom right corner. You think it's going to nestle into the bottom of the net. Um, Fabianski's out of the picture, but it just rolls um, wide of the post. Um, and you're thinking, actually, maybe Lady Luck is is going to sort of like smile on us. Um, the rest of the match, to be honest, was just, you know, substitutions taking place. Vlasic come off. Bowen came on. Um, Zagreb made a, a, some substitutions. Rice came off with about seven minutes to go. Noble came on. Masuaku on for four nows. Um, Mikhail Antonio was given the last seven minutes off for Andre Yarmolenko. So there were some legs that were rested ahead of the battle against Manchester United. I mean, the remainder of the second half, to be honest, from about the 60th minute on Duke was, it was controlled. It was mature. It was a mature performance from West Ham. It was like, we've got the three points on paper. We all said it. This is our most difficult match on paper. Yeah. Um, we're two nil up. The crowd are, as far as they're concerned, it's they we've taken the sting out of them. We've knocked the stuffing out of their the opposition. We've got them where we want them. All we got to do for the next half an hour is manage the game, just keep the ball as much as we can, keep it in areas where they can't do us any danger. Don't go mad if we get an opportunity, take it. But let's you know what we have, we hold, and we did, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I said to you last night, you know, those those two or three, uh, those two decent shots that they had, you know, and then followed by a couple of half chances. And, and, and let's be fair, they weren't exactly decent half chances. Um, it just concerned me that we were we were sitting a bit deeper, um, as you can see there. Yeah, yeah the, the possession stop. stats swung quite a bit. It went from yeah. we had sixty percent at half time, and then at the final whistle, we've got dropped down to forty nine. But to, like I say, an awful lot of that I think is probably due to the fact that we've kind of gone. That's fine. We've done the yeah. job now. The you know, we did game management, on. and we, we played like we can in the Premier League. You know, we kind of mm. let the team have the ball. We didn't really care. We never looked. Um, we never looked bang in trouble at any no. point. You know, we had to, like you say, lady luck, Sean. But, you know, we've, we've come out on that, mate. And, and listen, at the end of the day, we've come home with a three point. And the boys will be back, uh, I'm guessing, later on today if they're not already, you know, on the plane coming home. Yeah. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, we're going to the game against United now on, a, on an absolute buzz. You know, the confidence has got to be through the roof. You know, Man United have got to feel a bit, um, a bit shell shocked, a bit hit. Um, I know what they say about, um, you know, a wounded animal being its most dangerous. But I, I listen. At the end of the day, I think we can, I think we can all go into that game with the confidence, and we can hold our own against this United side. Um, the only thing I'd yeah. probably say as an advantage that they've got, though, Duke, is they've got two extra days of rest compared to us. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that. But then uh, on the flip side to that. Um, one of their key players is, is um, I, I do believe, ready to draw his pension. You know, he was hauled <laughs> off uh, for Jesse Lingard. Um, he was hauled off for Jesse Lingard um, after, you know, again, another another typical CR7 performance. You know, the, the guy still astounds me at 36 years old that he does what he does as well yeah. as he does what he does. Um, you know, I, I spoke quite candidly about it on uh, on the on the transfer deadline day so with Andy and I said I personally think that's a lot of money on a guy his age that you know didn't really have although he scored 20 goals in Serie A last year and you know was the top scorer um, yeah. I don't think he offered a great deal outside of those 20 goals if you know what I mean so yeah. it wasn't you know a great deal else going on are the legs beginning to foul I've not seen that yet I've not seen that yet. Uh, I'm kind of eating my words uh, when I said he'd get 20 Premier League goals this season. Um, he, he could get more than that. Um, I just hope that um, uh, Zuma and, and either Oggy or, or Diop or even Dawson at the weekend um, manage to keep that guy under wraps because it could be quite embarrassing. Um, you know, I uh, I hope he plays on their left because I'd love to see Stufau absolutely smash his granny out of him. 
Um, I got a I funny feeling it'll be that. Sue Fowl and Fredericks after the performance of Fredericks yeah, well, yesterday. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be surprised, but then, you know, hopefully he doesn't come up against Cresswell because um, I will be um, rocking myself to sleep. Um, with mm, yeah, but then um, Pablo will, will be... On his bum. Yeah, but Pablo's not naturally defensive against a player that is, you know, let's be honest, half of these players um, in this West Ham side have never come up against a player of the, the calibre of a Cristiano Ronaldo. But um, that'll be one for, that'll be one for, for Sunday. Um, you know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Um, you know, the, the, the stats, the stats will say us, Rob. So for the most part, you know, we can see they come down the left um, more than the right, but a lot of it. This is shots. The middle. This is shots on and, goal. Yeah. But again, I mean, you look at you look at the the 36 percent that's come in. That that says to me that we're coming in off the left to have a thing with the right. You know, Declan Rice's was a left footed shot. Now, yeah. For me, again, um, he was at the heart of everything we did going forward. Yeah. He was at the heart of everything we did defensively. You know, so, I mean, I think if my memory serves, 62% vote within man of the match. Uh, I I don't know, but he, he was my man of the match. I rather sense he was yours. Yeah, without a doubt, I'd say... Um, I, I, vote, I did a Twitter poll um, before I got into bed last night, and I voted him man of the match from what I saw of the game, and what I, you know, from what I'd read and what I understood. Um, I voted him, and I do believe it came out at sixty-two percent, sixty-three percent to Declan Rice, and you know, it says a lot about the man. You know, he's he's heart and soul is West Ham right now, and um, long may it continue. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he was my man of the match, although I would give. I, I mean, I I was on um, Hammers chat. Obviously, as one of the Patreons, I've um, I was on the, their post match um, player ratings. I gave yeah. Declan Rice a ten because I I, I I was just like, what else could he have done? That you know, what yeah. he, he scored a goal, he drove the team on, he he showed leadership qualities. You know, defensively he was strong, offensively he was strong. Um, what more do you want? Um, but I also gave a, I gave a nine to Mikel Antonio. I thought he absolutely terrorised their back line all night, oh, occupied them massively. Yeah. Um, just to draw your attention to something, I mean, this, not this one. Hang on. Here we go. Right. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just scroll in. Yeah, yeah. Declan Rice, his spa- passing stats. 98.2% yeah, yeah, yeah. accuracy, the best in the team. Absolutely ridiculous. And especially with that amount of passes. But then you look at uh, Manuel, 95.7. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it, it surprised it me. I like how, again, Fabianski's distribution annoyed me, I've got to say. Um, and then again, yeah. you look at that, um, his kicking is diabolical at the moment. It's yeah, woeful. it's not great. Um, and we need... Uh, we need to rectify that quite quickly because it will come back. Um, just stored there. Um, Fredericks had a very good chance, um, and I, I'm not quite sure what it is with our right backs that don't Straight know the keeper, would it? Yeah, you know, Sufal would rather pass on the edge of the box. Fredericks rather would rather smash yeah. it straight into someone. So, but listen, it was well, it was job done, um, mm. and it was job done after about. It was still done after 50 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah realistically, minutes. it was. They didn't yeah. look like they were going to really... Unless they'd got a goal, they didn't really look like they were going to trouble us in any way, shape or form to, uh, for us not getting those points at the end of the game. Um, and we now know, you know, we've got, we've got two weeks off before our next European adventure. Um, yeah. You know, is it, is, it, is it rapid we've got next or is it Genk we've got next? Uh, rapid, I do believe. Yeah, I think it is my because my, my brother in law's going. Um so uh yeah, I mean listen we're we're buzzing this morning, aren't we? We're staying absolutely buzzing. I look forward to picking up a newspaper. And the and the last thing I will make a mention of, Duke, I've got to do this, um, is I I've got to pay a special tribute to the two thousand or so West Ham fans that went over there, despite all of the stuff that we heard about um, you know, having to do COVID tests, about having to what be breathalyzed, uh, uh, you yeah. know, all, all of the rest of it. 
Um, some way, somehow, we've managed to sell our 2,000 allocation. Um, some people, I mean, 750 tickets, as I said on the pre-match, 750 tickets that became available at two days' notice, gone. I mean, I couldn't do that, not in my job. Two days' notice, hey, boss, can I jump on a plane and bugger off to Croatia? Yeah, sure. Not going to happen. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. My hat's off yeah. to all of them. And you represented the club brilliantly as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, there we shall end it because time has beaten us again, my friend. Duke, thanks for joining me. Not a problem. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I've got to do it. Like I say, with, you know, with time constraints for, for myself over this weekend, if everything yeah. goes to play, um, I needed to, uh, you know, needed to record this early this morning. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. All right, mate. And uh, guys, as I say, don't forget, Drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and Duke would like you to touch. Just tickle the bell. Just gently, tickle very, very gently stroke the bell like that. Okay. Um, and as usual, guys, please don't forget the campaign for Isla goes on. You've got that there. It's in the description below on YouTube and Facebook. Copy and paste it onto the stream, onto your, your social media platforms. She needs the help for neuroblastoma. She can't get the treatment in this country. It's really expensive. If you can put money in the pot as well, you've got a Just Giving link there. We'd encourage you to do so. Thank you very much indeed for listening. As always, and there we shall leave it on the eve of Dinamo Zagreb 2. Oh, sorry, Dinamo Zagreb 2. It's too early. Dinamo Zagreb 0, <laughs> West Ham United 2, in our debut in the European Europa League group stage. We've come away with three points in what was said to be the toughest match of the lot. Can't be bad. Duke, what do you want to finish with? Um, we're not just fucking massive. We're fucking massive in Europe as well. We are. Come on, you irons. <laughs>